So pretty much the same, but I you cut I the left, goose. I cut the goose. You, the goose I don't want to cut the goose. I want the goose. <laughs> the goose to... is cooked. You're now listening to the Wandering Buffalo podcast with your hosts Andrew Chang and Justin Goddard. Hello and welcome to the Wandering Buffalo Podcast, a show on the Built-In Buffalo Network. My name is Andrew Chang and alongside me is my co-host Justin Goddard. Tonight, Justin and I are going to pick up on our 53-man roster prediction by talking about the defensive and special teams uh, roster prediction. As always, you can find us on social media, podcasting platforms, and even on YouTube by searching The Wandering Buffalo Podcast. You can also find our show as well as other amazing content by looking up the built-in Buffalo Network. Let's break down some Bills-related news. Uh, As we know, there are some headliners in the news recently. But first, and as always, Justin, how are you doing? I'm good. Hanging in there. It was a it was a pretty busy day. We're getting a later start than normal. Um, but again, kind of same as last week. I'm pretty jazzed up about this. This is, I love the roster construction part of football. So I really enjoyed doing these last couple episodes. How are you? You know, I'm doing great. It was my aunt's birthday. Happy so, birthday? Yeah, happy birthday to Kim. So uh, we, we had a great time, had a lot of good food, and I I might, I feel lethargic right now. So if I seem it, it's totally normal. <laughs> Beautiful. Anyways, let's get into the, some Bills related news. And I know you and I necessarily didn't want to talk about this, but it's gotten to the point where we need to talk about it. Cole Beasley openly told Twitter users that he isn't vaccinated and that he doesn't want to be. He would prefer to get fined or even as go far as to retire. This is a really hot topic, Justin, and I know you and I agree that we don't want to touch it, but if you toss in that R word, meaning retired, especially to a key contributor on the offense, we have to talk about it. And I'm going to keep my opinions to myself, but at the end of the day, Cole Beasley is a person who has the right to make his own decisions. And like he said, he's an adult and he can accept the consequences of those decisions. As long as he's cognizant of that, he can do whatever he wants, really. I mean, I just want him to play for the Bills and no one has legal right to make him do anything. Right? So, it's it's just kind of like a weird situation. But the most important thing is that I just want him to be healthy and safe. Right. And... And the first time that we really had to touch on this was, you know, when Josh Allen was asked about it and, you know, if he was, if uh, how he felt about other players on the team and their decisions. And kind of both of us had the stance at the time of, you know, the NFL is not forcing anybody to do it. Um, but we knew that there was going to be, you know, some, some restrictions, some, some guidelines that people are going to have to follow if they decided not to do it. Um, so what's kind of crazy to me is I'm kind of in the same boat, whether you agree with it or not. He's an adult that's that's able to make his own decisions with his own body. Um, the thing is, like, this is one that you couldn't really avoid on Twitter or anything. You know, you, you saw it everywhere. And it, there's there's so many comments and stuff that I saw that's like, we should cut him, he should retire, all this. And, you know, I kind of look at it as like, well, we kind of went down this road with Josh Allen, what, a month and a half, two months ago. I didn't see anybody calling for Josh Allen to retire at the time. Right. So it's, it's kind of like, you know, he gets this devaluation because he's not the franchise quarterback but you know he's still an important piece on the team um kind of what what i liked about what he was saying is that he was kind of speaking as an older player in the league and he said something along the lines of there's people out there that feel like me that don't feel like they're in the position in their career to be able to say things um and and that made me think of josh allen like you know if this was him in the media every day, this would be 
an even bigger firestorm of a story. Mm. I think it's also kind of stories getting extra attention and blowing up because we're in mm. we're in the slow part of the season. People don't have much to talk about. Um, but I mean, if we're talking this time last year, we weren't even sure if there was actually going to be a season. Right. So, and you know, we the NFL forged through that and you know, the guidelines they have out there now, who's to say they even remain the same when you talk another two months down the road? You know, it's it was all just, in there. It was just a couple weeks ago that it was, you know, only vaccinated people could come to watch the games. And now it's the vaccinations aren't going to be checked at the stadium. It's going to be, you know, an honor system. And, you know, yeah, the the way the world is going right now, you don't you don't even know where where anything's going to stand on that when you actually get to September in football games. Um, and I think he's a great player on the team. We all. Anybody that listens to to this show knows how the two of us feel about him as a football player. So, yeah, whatever it looks like, if he's getting fined, whatever, I I want to see him on the field. So that's about where I stand on it. Yeah, stay on the field, stay healthy, don't break your other leg, and let's let's get the chip. <laughs> you <Right>. know, <laughs> that's how I feel about it. <laughs> um, anyways, let's transition to another very important. Bills related news piece. The Bills apparently have been reported that a new stadium is coming, but it's not going to be a downtown stadium. It's going to apparently they're thinking about making a new outdoor stadium in Orchard Park since the lease at Highmark is up in 2023. So there's going to be some overlap because the new stadium won't be ready as earliest until 2025 so there's the bills have to play somewhere and i don't really know how i feel about that some places like penn state and some other place up in canada have been you know say you have basically said yeah we'll we'll host the bills so it's like I, i just don't really know how i feel about that because it's not really a home game for the team if they gotta travel to canada or I know to exactly how I feel about it. Well, yeah, I know. I don't like it. I I see the so if we're talking about strictly the venue style, I see the appeal for a downtown stadium. I really do. I really think that if done right, that could be really really good. But I just don't think we have the infrastructure. And by say we, the city of Buffalo has the infrastructure at the moment to support something like that and it's more economical to build in orchard park as opposed to building around the skyway <laughs> you know like like right. that that would just be so difficult and what do you who who are you going to push out pearl street brewery yeah, are they going to like and... they're going to push it down by the uh, silos like well, i don't know it's just it would be a lot it would be a lot yeah i mean so for me, I mean, you're talking. We already have. I'm I'm out of touch with. Is it still Key Bank? Key. Uh, mm, no. The I, Sabers I, have lost me completely. Yeah, it's. Well, you got not great. You, you got the hockey down there. You already have the Bisons down there, and there's there's a finite amount of space. Um, what I never really liked about the city of Buffalo idea being like being located downtown. It's kind of just like the the tailgating aspect of it is like it's not just a Buffalo thing. Like people around the whole league know about Buffalo tailgates. Like if you talk about the Buffalo Bills and somebody's a casual football fan, they're like, "Oh, tailgates!" You know. And I think it's just it's not just about a football game when people go to the stadium. It's it's a whole day experience. So for me, I I actually like the idea of still having the stadium in Orchard Park. What what I don't like is even if it's, you know, a couple of years, the the idea of having to play outside of Buffalo while they finish building it. And I was actually talking to somebody about this today and I was like, you know, just as a Bills fan, well like what can go wrong might go wrong type of deal. I'm like, what mm-hmm. if, what if they play elsewhere and you know, it starts being a bigger market somewhere else, and the NFL is like, "Man, we want to relocate you." And they're like, "Well, the stadium's already going to be built, so they have to come back." 
I was like, they build Olympic stadiums all the time to use for one series of Olympic games, and that's it. Like, and look what I, it does to the economy of the yeah. host of the Olympics. Like that literally um, breaks them. I I think I think the Bills do need a new stadium. Um, I I know that's this is all kind of part of what goes into it. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the other thing I don't really love about it is, um, uh, from what I've seen, they're planning on doing just an open air stadium, um, with the, with some of the Buffalo weather we get, I mean, we're talking all these, all these locations that have bu- built new stadiums pretty much like get the Super Bowl the year after. Um, I don't, I still don't see the NFL putting a Super Bowl in Buffalo if, if they're, you know prize of the whole season their biggest money maker could come down to you know a, a blizzard in february in buffalo i mean mm-hmm. it's it's entertaining for like a regular season game and it's really fun to watch it's really fun to be a part of but when it comes down to it if you have the a two snowball. best teams in the league going at it you want to see the the two best teams at their best you know you don't want to see an offense like Kansas City, Buffalo, whatever, with high flying offenses that pass fifty times a game now they're running it fifty times because they can't really throw the ball. So Yeah. I would like to see a retractable roof. You get the best of both worlds. Yeah. You know, a retractable a retractable roof does sound good. And then on the other hand I think to myself, Well, the weather is a real competitive edge here in buffalo it really is and i mean it's the same way i think about us going down to miami and early in the season like that sucks like that really just sucks that's so hot and humid but yeah and and i uh, agree with that to an extent but like also the bills team that we're building right now and looking towards the future as like a high high octane offense predicated on the pass. Yeah. So like do I love the snow games? Is it like what Buffalo Bills football is when people think about it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and I love that aspect of it, but also I want the ball in Josh Allen's hands forty times a game and the weather can kind of, you know, put a damper on that. Yeah. Well, all in all, I'm okay with the stadium. I really am. It's it's I it, I I'm I'm just a ambivalent person when it came to this because I could I I could honestly see the positives of both both structure uh, structures so that's just how I feel. <laughs> Anyways, let's transition to uh, the main chunk of this episode with our 53 man roster prediction, specifically focusing on the defense and. Again, I I mentioned this last week, but this is a hard thing to do. And I'm glad that Brandon Bean does it, and I don't have to. (laughs) Again, I would encourage you as a listener, viewer, or just a podcast fan, or if you're a fan of the Buffalo Bills just in general, just to try this exercise out because it, it would show you how deep this roster is and how how hard it is to be a general manager but we don't even have to have the conversations with players either yeah seriously we we just like just do a strike through on their name highlight them on a red and call today basically did you find the defensive end of the roster harder than the offensive side for me personally i thought it was harder yeah i i had a harder time with the defense and i think as I started it, I, I kind of expected it to be this way. Um, like, with the defense, we have a lot more rotating pieces. You have, like, your base defenses. You have your sub packages. Uh, you have a lot more moving parts mm-hmm. um, on the defensive side of the ball. When you look at the the off- offensive side of the ball, you know, you have your top four primary receivers. You have your top five offensive line combination, and then you're kind of filling in the depth. Um, right. whereas, especially in a, in a Bean McDermott system that they, that they cook up in, uh, like with the defensive line, you know, they're always rotating in bodies to keep people fresh and whatnot. So right, like you had right. to go 
I think you had to go a little bit deeper on the defensive side, and that made it a little bit more difficult. Right. Well, that being said, let's dive into it. So I kept 25 players on defense, the exact same number that I kept on offense, and I kept three special teamers. Um, you know, the main special teamers, like long snapper, punter, and kicker. Nothing. Reed Ferguson for his yeah. career. Yeah, not really. I cut him. No, I'm just kidding. I, did. I didn't cut him. <laughs> but I'm going to start with the defensive end. So I had the Bills keeping the following defensive ends. Carlos Basham Jr., Jerry Hughes, Mario Addison, Gregory Rousseau, and A.J. Apinesa. Right? So we, I kept the two rookies that we just brought in. Hughes, your daddy. Second-year player, A.J. Apinesa. And veteran leader, Mario Addison. I cut Daryl Johnson because at this point we have a lot of defensive ends. That special teams play might not be enough for him to stick around on this team. And if he could contribute a little more on defense, I think he would be super valuable. But that's just not the case. We might be able to sneak him back on the practice squad if that's what the Bills want to do, but I just don't know if Daryl Daryl Johnson's like a super sought after player in the league, considering that's he just contributes on special teams. I also cut Brian Cox Jr. I mean, he's got good bloodlines with his father being in the league in the past, and I know Father's Day was yesterday. Again, we are recording on Monday, but. That isn't enough to keep him, Brian. <laughs> like, that's not enough to keep him on the team. So, uh, it's, I, I don't know. I just don't know what he's got. I just don't think he's got enough in the toolbox to compete with everyone else. And then this last one, F.A. Obata. I really, really, really wanted to keep F.A. He's got a really cool story about coming to the league. But in the end, I had to cut him, and I didn't like it. But... I think we also have to understand this. Him, his skill set, like Christian Wade, are relatively new to the game. Like, they're both still kind of learning it. And, you know, I mean, F.A. FA probably is on a faster track to getting, getting the game down before Christian Wade. But if you combine that with the lonely $1.5 million contract that he signed for... It's just kind of enough for me to say, like, he might not be on the team. And he might get that chop because the Bills didn't really toss a whole lot of money at him. But So he might be expendable. So I think, I think this already speaks to how much more challenging the defensive side was than the offensive side because mm-hmm. we, we didn't have huge amounts of variance on on some of our decisions last week, but right from the rip here, I, I have a few different different thoughts than you. Oh, ho, ho. Um, some of the obvious ones. Um, did you mention Mike Love? Oh, yeah, he's gone too. Yeah, Sorry. Mike Love's gone too. Um, Brian Cox Jr., he was already fighting an uphill battle to make this roster um, as deep as we are at the position now. Um, but he also, I think, Two days ago, three days ago, I don't know. Time's relative. He also got carted off the field, so I did yeah. not know that. Yeah, so I think he already had a, a tough spot, and then you know, w- wish him the best of his health and hope it's nothing too serious. I haven't seen much about it because I I do think he could latch on somewhere else. Mm-hmm. Um, he's one of the guys that you know I was excited to see more from a couple of years ago, um, but. And it's not happening in Buffalo. Um, So for me, um, got Basham, Addison, Hughes, Rousseau, AJ Epinesa as well. Um, I have to keep my guy F.A. Um, I loved what I saw from him in Carolina. Um, Like you said, transitioning to the game and all that, he put up five and a half sacks last year. I think he could kind of be that trent murphy type player where you don't really see him as a a long-term piece um but what he can offer you in the short term while these younger guys are coming along i think could be very valuable for this roster 
Mm-hmm. I was also kind of willing to go a little bit heavier on the defensive end rotation um, with the versatility of a couple of these guys um, and kind of thin out the defensive tackles. I also do have Daryl Johnson sticking around, and it's only being mentioned with the defensive ends because that's his position on paper. Um, but this is strictly one of those uh, being McDermott will keep guys around because they really value special teams. Uh, he plays all four phases of special teams. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe he sticks around, and when we can start getting out of the contracts of like a Medikavich and even a guy like Taiwan Jones, something like those older guys that are just special teams aces, maybe he can become that and kind of just have a long career of doing that. Um, but at least for the short term, I have him sticking around. Right, right. And, yeah, you know, I mean, it, it's it's a hard thing to do with this group. So I, I just knew right off the bat that we were going to have some differences. So let's transition to the defensive tackles. So I had the Bills keeping the def- following defensive tackles. Vernon Butler. He took a pay cut, so I think he's pretty safe at this point. Ed Oliver, he's he's making the team. There's just, I mean, come on. Star Lutule, the uncuttable man. Even if the Bills wanted part ways, it would literally cost them money. And then I had Harrison Phillips making the team. So that means I have the team. I have the Bills cutting Brandon Bryant. I mean, he's just not making the team, right? Like he's just not. Uh, Tavon Hester ah, he was a free agent signing signed for cheap and although he's an interesting player according to Joe Marino the host of Locked On Bills podcast who, who I, I trust ton, very much I yeah I have a ton of respect for Joe Marino I just don't think that interest is enough to earn him a spot on this team and again he signed super late he was out there in the market for a while before the Bills picked him up. And then lastly, Justin Zimmer. And I love Justin Zimmer. He's he's the man. He, I love his high motor and the fact that he leaves everything out there on the field. He single-handedly won us that first Patriots game with that forced fumble. and At least <sighs> saved us from overtime. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it's really... Who do you think the Bills will give that last spot to, right? Him or Harrison Phillips or Trayvon Hester? And for me personally, I thought Harrison Phillips probably would get the spot over all three of them. So similar group here. Um, Justin Zimmer's one that hurt me to cut. Um, I, I think he's a, a prime practice squad candidate. Oh, yeah. um, again, love his motor, um, his athleticism, um, but it, it came down to me just kind of, like I said, I kind of kept D-tackle a little bit thin just based on some of the defensive end versatility we've heard of. Um, so I, I have the same four as you, uh, Butler, Oliver, Starr, and Phillips was one I kind of struggled with. Me too. Um <laughs> It kind of depends what Harrison Phillips were getting. Mm-hmm. Um, I, it's it's between him and Trayvon Hester for me, but a couple of things yeah. went in Harry's favor. Was that he was a draft pick, um, mm-hmm. third round pick. Uh, he did kind of flash a little bit in his rookie season. You know, he struggled with he had the ACL. Yeah, then um, his knee exploded. Yeah, it was his second ACL. So this one is largely like. What can we see from Harrison Phillips if he can stay healthy? And yeah. what what kind of really swung the pendulum for me is just, and let me be very clear about this, Harrison Phillips was like the last roster spot I filled when I was doing this whole thing. Ooh. Like I was, I had to pull a couple strings to keep him around because I, I kind of had a change of heart and just like, what he does for the organization on and off the field, just the genuinely good person he seems to be. He's anytime you see him, he's so lighthearted and fun loving. And you can tell like he really has a passion for the game. 
Um, so for me, it's even if he can be like an adequate rotation piece mm -hmm. that everything else he brings to the table, maybe we visit it down the, down the line. Maybe he doesn't get a contract extension, but for the time being, I want to keep a guy like that in the locker room. And if right. he, if he can have a healthy season and bounce back from, you know, catastrophic injury, you know, r really get back to a hundred percent. I, I see him as the, the long-term uh, replacement for star at the one tech. And I really like star Latule for what he does for the rest of the defense, but he's not like a world burner, you know, one tech defensive tackle. He's, mm -hmm an average to above average starter. So right. even if we get that level of play and Harrison Phillips can take over that role and let all the pieces around him, you know, fill up the stat sheets while he holds it down in the middle, I think that that could be a good career for him. So I've always been in Harry's corner. I got yeah. a custom made jersey for him and everything. Harry's corner. Yeah, that'd, mm. be a, that'd be a good one. I, I do like Harrison Phillips a lot on and off the field. However, I am going to disagree with you for the fact that I'm not sure if he can if if he's going to contribute more than what we've seen. He did flash a little bit, but then the injury came up and I just don't know if he's ever going to get to back to that level. So, until I see it, I'm just going to have to say no. He won't reach that point again at uh, I want him to, obviously. Really, I really do. But you heard, well, heard it here first, Harry. I'm rooting for you. Harry's corner, and I'm rooting for you too, man. I want you. I want you to succeed. I want everyone to succeed. <laughs> but let's transition to the linebackers. So I had the Bills keeping the following linebackers: Matt Milano, Andre Smith, AJ Klein, Tremaine Edmonds, Tyler Medikevich. And Tyrell Adams. And I kept Matt Milano for, you know, obvious reasons. Same thing with Tremaine Edmonds. Tyler Medvedkiewicz, again, took a pay cut. Super special teams contributor. Andre Smith, they love him. They brought him back. Super cheap. He's got to make the team. AJ Klein, uncuttable. And I honestly was going to cut Tyrell Adams, but I didn't. And I'll get into the reasons of why I cut the following players. So Joe Giles, Harris, I mean, come on. Yeah, you, you're just not me. Mike Bell. I mean, come on again, right? And I'm pretty sure this is his second stint with the Bills, if I'm not mistaken. And he he made the team as a tryout or something. Am I, am I wrong in thinking that? If so, I, I, I'm pretty sure this is his second stint with the Bills. Markel Lee... I think he's more of a special teams contributor as opposed to defense, which isn't a bad thing. It's just not enough to earn him a spot, especially when we have other special team aces, such as Tyler Medikevich, who's also a linebacker, and Taiwan Jones. And then Ty Tyrell Dotson. This was a really, really hard one for me. I, he was on and off, on and off for me. And I actually, I had him on. And then right before this episode, I, I cut him. <laughs> so, and I did that mainly because I think the Bills really like Tyrell Dotson. But, and they keep, they, they even kept him around after that domestic case popped up. It, like his rookie undrafted free agent year. But at the end of the day, I think like, I think a player like Tyrell Adams is a better fit because he can contribute on special teams and defense probably a little more than Dotson. And he showed some flashes in Houston last year, and I, th I think that that's enough for him to get the edge over Dotson. So I kept Dotson. <laughs> I know, I know you did. I I already knew b b when we were going into this. Yeah, I I like some of the flashes I've seen from Dodson. Um, he's got he's got some cleaning up to do with his game. Mm -hmm. um, but I I think there's something to be said for the continuity, the seeing him in some game action, and and 
knowing what you're getting out of him, what he does well, and and what he doesn't. Um, this position for me, I would have done a couple things differently. I would have liked to have kept um, Tyrell Adams, but for me, I couldn't. I couldn't really do exactly what I wanted to do because I know we're handcuffed with some salaries. Um, Tyler Medikavich and AJ Klein, we can't really get out of right now um, without it, you know, costing us some money. Mm-hmm. Um, so they're both sticking around. Um, Klein showed that he was pretty, pretty adequate to above average when given a very specialized role. Run straight. <laughs> Run straight specifically. I still don't want to see him for any extended time. Um, Andre Smith was one I battled with um, because he he was – there were so many times last year when they were, like, tinkering around with the tail end of the roster when I was like, just cut Andre Smith and bring somebody else in. Yeah, I thought he was the odd man out so many yeah, times. Yeah, so many times, and he kept sticking around. Um, but I I had to let him go this year. Um, the, the other, the other three there, um, four, I'm sorry, Markel Lee, uh, Joe Giles Harris, Mike Bell, Tyrell Adams. It it was mostly just a familiarity thing and these guys being brought in and for competition, you think? Yeah. And Mm. to me, we haven't seen enough and we talked about this last week, you know, it's a too early roster prediction. This is just kind of a fun exercise to see where we stand. Um, but until, until we can see a little bit more out of them, um, through, through training camps, through preseason, all that, these guys, it's not like we went out and brought in, you know, starting caliber linebackers to back up positions. These were guys mm-hmm. that were cast off elsewhere. So yeah, to me, I kept Tyrell Dodson. I have him maintaining the position he already had and, that job is wide open for any of these guys to contribute and, and take that job as far as I'm concerned. Right. All right. Well, I, well said. And I, I don't know that, that linebacking room was really hard for me to go through because I, I kept going back and forth on it, but we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone. We're going to pick up on our way too early 53-man roster predictions by picking up with the cornerbacks. I had the Bills keeping the following cornerbacks. Tredavious White. What? I know, right? Stupid. Jaron Johnson. Even stupider. (laughs) Right. Uh, Dane Jackson. Levi Wallace. Saran Neal. And the Goose. The goose made the team in my book. <laughs> the goose. So Tredavious White, he's he's making the team. Levi Wallace, he's proven that he's he's a starter. He's an average starter in this league, and he signed for cheap. He's he's on the team, and he's got rapport with the team. Saran so Neal, special teams god, good man. Teron Johnson, going into his final year of his rookie contract, proved a lot during the last uh, quarter of the season and he's got great starting experience i just hope that he can stay healthy dane jackson definitely showed some promise especially in that arizona game against that d hop pass and that interception against sam darnold in the jets game and then wild goose he he's a draft he's a draft pick so that being said i had the bills cutting cam lewis again i think this is a player that the Bills really, really, really like. It's just Tehran has the starting job for right now, and if Rashad Wild Goose, a, a draft pick, decides to, or if they put him in the slot position like the draft network predicted him to do, I just don't really see how a guy like Cam Lewis makes the team over a draft pick, considering he was an undrafted free agent. Elijah Griffin... Yeah, it's it's hard to make this team, right? You're a, I'm gonna echo what I said before. If you're an undrafted free agent, your chances of making this roster are 
next to nothing pretty much like unless you really show out like really 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 show out and this doesn't get it easy easier for a guy like griffin so for those reasons i had him getting cut okay so i i have trey levi taron johnson jane jackson and saran neal um so pretty much the same but i you cut the I left, goose i cut the goose, you, the goose i don't want to cut the goose I want the goose. The goose to, is cooked. I want the goose to be the best Buffalo Bills cornerback that ever existed. I want his Ooh. jersey. I want him to sign it. Um, that one. That one for me was. It started to be a numbers game, and I, I will say that uh, I have at least two of these guys making the practice squad, and I think it's. I think. I think Wild Goose is the insurance policy if we get some of the roller coaster of uh, Taron Johnson again this year. Um, He looked much better towards the tail end of the season, but we have to remember that they benched him for Cam Lewis. This is true. You know, we we never really saw how that would shake out because Cam Lewis got hurt. What? What, he like break his wrist or something? Yeah, like four plays into his first start. So, you know. He did He did do a solo tackle to Derrick Henry, which was sick. Yeah, that's fun. So, Cam Lewis is on the outs for me. Um, he's got a good story, but I just, I think, it, uh, unfortunately, he had like his moment and it was cut short with injury. Yeah. Sometimes those moments only come around once for guys. Uh, Elijah Griffin, he's he's another one that I, I think ends up right on the practice squad. He's going to be up in the practice squad regulating, you know, okay. like his father, Warren G, <laughs> which is awesome. Right. Uh, right. Nick McLeod gets cut for me as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, he's um, cut for me too. Sorry. Yeah, so I, I like the prospect of Wild Goose in future seasons, uh, especially being that this team – seems to like to have that you know late round development corner that doesn't have to be like this high pro- profile day one pick um i just i think he needs some time to to get groomed a little bit and mm-hmm. just the options ahead of him right now are are better options and and then it just starts being a numbers game i could see a path to to the roster for him if we say, you know, try him out on some special teams things and he's really performing, mm-hmm. and then kind of revisit, like, a Taiwan Jones, um, uh, maybe a Saran Neal, the, the guys that are pretty much around to be special teams aces. Right. If he can, you know, get one of those jobs and be cheaper labor while you groom him for a future position on the team, I could, I could see that being a path. Um, and I would personally be a big fan of that path because... Love Taiwan Jones, love his grit, love everything he's done. Um, but he is getting a little bit long in the tooth, and he doesn't have a cool enough name too. Yeah, uh, but I would I would love to be able to see you know another running back dress on game day that we could have Singletary, Moss, and Brita all active and ready to play, and not have another spot used on a Taiwan Jones. So okay. We'll see if he could if he could be a, a guy that could do that, but right. I mean special teams is mostly run down the field and make a tackle for for like the say a gunner spot. So Easier said than that. done. <laughs> yeah. I'm not gonna do it. Right, right. Anyways, uh, let's let's transition to the next group, the safeties, the last position group on the defense. I had the Bills keeping the following safeties. Micah Hyde. Jordan Poyer, Jaquan Johnson, and Demar Hamlin. So, Samesies. Yeah, so like Mike Hyde, Jordan Poyer, you, you can't break up the band. Best safety tandem duo in the league, in my opinion. And that's no fan goggles. Like they, They're just really, really strong. They're really, really strong <laughs> together, and it's they're good. There's, there's just no other way to go around it. Jaquan Johnson. He's been he's proven that he's a contributor to this team. And Damar Hamlin, draft pick, who from what I've read and what I've seen, 
shows a lot of promise and it sounds like he was a pretty pretty good pickup in the sixth round so I, I'm hoping the best so that being said I had the Bills cutting Josh Thomas and Tariq Thompson Josh Thomas DeMar Hamlin greater than Josh Thomas DeMar Hamlin is a draft pick of this regime Josh Thomas was an undrafted free agent of this regime so the Sova for Josh Thomas right uh, and then Tariq Thompson and I feel like a broken record here but it is gonna be really hard for an undrafted free agent to make this team and that's why I have the undrafted free agents getting cut from the safety positions yeah, so the the only real difference I have here from you is uh, Jaquan J- Jaquan Johnson. I'm sorry, is he's a real fringe roster guy for me. Mm-hmm. Um, I I think he does contribute um, to special teams, but this is the type of guy where can we get that contribution from Rashad Wild Goose to keep him around? Um, with DeMar Hamlin coming in, I like his skill set a lot better for, God forbid we have an injury to Poyer or Hyde. I like him coming in a lot more, even as a rookie, than what we get out of uh, Jaquan Johnson in that scenario. Um, so so for me, sorry Jaquan, I'm kind of hoping that we get to cut him and keep like a wild goose around. Um, but for right now, I have him sticking around for, for what he does to, for special teams. Um, I even kind of toss the idea around of, like, can we have DeMar Hamlin step up and do fill that special teams role? I don't really know how I feel about, you know, in, in this case, my primary backup at safety um, being like a full team special teams guy. Because if he goes down, what's your backup plan? Um, but... I just think there there could be greater contributions from other players um, than Jaquan Johnson. Um, so hopefully Wild Goose can show a little bit of special team savvy and we can we can make a couple moves there. Right. right. And then uh, we're just going to move on to special teams. The last group here. Kicker, Tyler Bass. Punter, Matt Hawk. Long slap, snapper. Not long slapper. <laughs> slaps you from long distances <laughs> yeah yeah and that'd be reed ferguson for both positions if that if the other one existed <laughs> uh, that's pretty straightforward i mean who else are we gonna have right it's not straightforward oh come on i have two discrepancies here oh really yeah so okay. tyler bass yep reed ferguson yes matt hawk i uh, i would like to cut him and bring bojo back Oh, um, okay, okay. I'm I'm doing is the it hawk I'm, or hawk. Uh, that was like hawk. we have a rule on the show that if I can't pronounce pronounce your name, you got to go. So I'm not sure. Um, the heck, I think it's hawk. pronounced hawk. Yeah, this I is thought great it was hawk content. too. <laughs> um, Whatever. But anyways, I I've been doing this exercise of um, rewatching all the games. Uh, we're trying to put something together for it, and. There's not often that you see a punt as like a featured part of a highlight tape unless it's like a ridiculous return. Mm-hmm. And there was there's so many clips of just a Bojo punt that were like backed up at our own goal line and he boots it to like the opposing 20 and like it has enough hang time that we get there to cover it and all that. I just for for what the difference was in salary. We're probably talking like a million dollars, especially with this is kind of coming with the caveat of knowing that we have Stefan Diggs restructured and we have a little bit of money in the bank to play with. Mm-hmm. I would have rather paid Bojo again than brought in somebody else. Right. Um, which brings me to my second point, which is special team slash receiver. Uh, I would have really liked to see Andre Roberts stick around. Um, we're ah. we're seeing, and, and I'm I'm lumping him with special teams. You know, we're seeing a lot of I stuff. Put of like, I put the return the that guy in wide receiver. Yeah, but you know, he he was kind of the receiver by name only. Yeah. He didn't really 
do a ton of snaps there. Um, but I, I've seen a lot of like stuff coming out of like it's an open competition, like it's anybody's job to win, and just for me, one of the most important parts on this team, if especially a team that focuses on special teams, is fielding a punt clean, making a smart decision with a kick return, and make sure making sure the ball ends up back in Josh Allen's for ha- hands for him to do what he does. Yeah, um, and I, I have. I have some lingering concerns about, you know, are we going to see mistakes and hiccups and turnovers there that we haven't seen in the past few years? And for me, it's like, oh, what do you get in Houston? Like $5 million? It's like, what was the discrepancy that we couldn't really make up the difference? And all this is kind of in in hindsight because we do have that money from Diggs now. But I, I... I really want Roberts on this team still. Maybe we can swing a trade. <laughs> well, I really want him on this team too, but may- maybe he didn't want to come back. Maybe. There's always that possibility. Takes yeah. two to tango. And I, I tossed that around too, but like... How he much- always said that he only signs one-year deals and that it was very weird that he signed a two-year deal with the Bills. How much better was the offer that you left a legitimate Super Bowl contending team to go to Houston is where I get hung up on it. I, hey, he he went to the Jets, right, willingly. Houston. Maybe he likes it hot. Maybe he wants to be by yeah. a dumpster fire. Yeah, who knows? I don't know. Well, huh. anyways, that's going to wrap it up for this week's episode. Next week, we're going to do our most hated Bills of all time episode. Think like Disney villain, (laughs) you know, (laughs) that kind of evil. Go ahead and like, comment, subscribe, and review our podcast, as well as other amazing shows that you can find on the Built in Buffalo Network. We're always looking for great guests on the show, so reach out to us on our social media platforms if you're interested by searching The Wandering Buffalo Podcast. Justin, where can the people find you? Find me on all social medias, uh, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. I'm at at jgods22. And you can always find me on the same platforms by searching 2Changs. That's going to do it for us tonight. And as always, Justin, go go Bills. Bills.